Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Can you guys hear me? At the back, a quick shout out if you guys can hear me. Yes, perfect. A big thank you to E4M team and especially my marketing team, Neha, for syncing the calendar. It's been a while coming for E4M events in India. Uh, I think the last one I attended was almost five years back. And the brief that I got for this session was all about how are we driving personalization in the programmatic space and what else we can do to bring more automation because the idea of programmatic initially was about automating buying and selling of ads. But over the past one decade, there is a lot of complexity around different technology elements. And my fellow panelists in the previous session, also I heard a lot about in the morning discussions when we talked about why there is a need of transparency and the urge of understanding the element of ad tech is very much important. So this whole session, the idea was to think about what is the element that is driving the personalization and how there is a big disruption happening. So before I go more deeper into the solution, I wanted to throw back some of the challenges that the programmatic industry is right now facing. And there is a big tectonic shift which is about to happen. So if we start thinking more about driving these personalization, most of your hyper-personalized ads are driven based on the signals on which these key advertising channels work. And it's not just programmatic. Channels like search, CTV, digital out of home, audio, you name any digital channel, all these channels are dependent on these signals. And when we talk about these traditional signals, there is a big challenge and the disruption which is happening in the industry that these traditional signals are depicting. When I talk about these signals, I think the first thing comes to our mind, the hot topic and the news which happened a few weeks back about Google not depreciating the third party cookie. But eventually, if we start thinking more about these signals beyond cookies, whether it's your device ID or the IDs through which we are tracking the consumer, there is a larger challenge which is happening in the overall ecosystem. The move to privacy is not just one force, it's a unifying force. And today I'm speaking not only on behalf of Omnicom Media Group as the Chief Digital Officer for Asia Pacific Market, I also represent here IAB Southeast Asia in India, which is a private council which talks about how we bring a lot of guardrails in terms of the safety and the elements, how consumers use internet. So while there are challenges that consumers are raising and asking more about, the use of their data and how a lot of the consumer data is being misused, there is also a lot of debate happening in terms of the browser aspect. And while browsers are doing their policy changes, in the last three years, if you talk about Safari, Firefox, they've already depreciated third-party cookies. And Chrome, I would say they have done the smartest move on the planet because they were facing a lot of challenges with the regulators, which is also the third force which is driving this privacy angle. The smartest move from them was, we never depreciate the cookie. It's the user saying, I don't want to give access to my data when I'm using Chrome as a browser. While there are challenges from a regulator standpoint, we are also seeing a lot of media platforms trying to become more thicker and taller walls. And when I talk about these walls, it's not just the duopoly which is bringing the walled garden narrative, but you talk about any streaming platform, you talk about any social platform, Everyone is scared about misuse of their consumer data. So we see a larger force coming into gameplay. While a lot of people think about simplification in terms of, in my market, my 60% spends are already happening on CTV. I'm not using any cookies. I'm using first party data, device ID. But things are becoming more complex. And the entire industry is only focusing right now on the consumer targeting side. And everyone thinks about use cases. If there is no third party cookie, can I use contextual signals? If there is no third party cookie, can I use my first party data to inference? But there is a larger ecosystem shift which is happening when we talk about measurement. And without the right measurement attribution models, the open vibe might not exist. So while we're discussing about some of the challenges that we are seeing, for every brand manager or every publisher sitting in the room, you have to start thinking about what is going to impact in your media investment? Because this problem of privacy and the signal getting lost is not just going to impact the personalization that we want on programmatic or the dynamic creatives that we keep talking about. It's also about the investment that you're doing on programmatic versus a closed ecosystem like a search and social. So as a marketer, you have to do your analysis, your audit. And as Omnicom, we are working closely with all the brands to help them understand how they can do a quick audit to understand which investment is it going to impact. 
because every brand is investing in a different strategy in different markets. Some brands are heavily investing on top funnel versus low funnel. Some brands in other markets are still at a growth and acquisition mode. So you have to think about what is your investment strategy with all this disruption happening. While these signal changes are bound to happen, we also have to think about how are we going to plan, target, and most importantly, like I said, major the media spends what we do. So it's not just about programmatic. It's also about understanding that without these signals, there will be too much fragmentation. And when I say fragmentation, we are already dealing with a lot of fragmentation. Someone like me who started my journey 16 years back had the dream of single consumer view. A 360 view where I can see what my consumer is doing on social platform, what are they searching, what are they buying. That dream never existed in reality. And now with all these challenges and the signals, I don't know whether in the future we will still be able to do a single consumer view. So there are tactical challenges that will be happening in the space with more fragmentation, whether it is media planning, activation, or measurement. So while these challenges are bound to happen, we are starting thinking about what are the capabilities that will get degraded. And I will come very soon on how the new capabilities can still help you drive the personalization and automate media buying on programmatic. But it is important to think about some of the capabilities that might not exist in the future. So think about fundamental capabilities like frequency management. Without third party cookies, without these signals, consumers are not happily sharing data with you that they've already seen your ad four times on platform A and they don't want to see your ads again on platform P. So there might be more wastage of ad dollars happening because of this increased fragmentation. We might see certain capabilities like cross-platform measurement. People, anyone from the analytics teams in the room? Anyone doing triple M's, MTA, multi-touch attribution modeling? There is a big impact which is going to happen in the measurement space because without these third-party cookies, we will not be able to attribute which platform drive the action on your site? Which platform finally gave you the conversion? Is it the eyeball that got an exposure on a CTV device watching your content prime time 9 p.m.? Or is it the same user doing a Google search and we should allocate all my budgets on the search? So measurement is going to be challenged. And while these capabilities are degrading, we have started thinking about how can we move into new adaptive capabilities. So think about adaptive capabilities. I'm sure the first one which everyone is talking about, audience creation. So how every brand have to start their journey on creating their own audiences, whether it's about the value exchange with consumer to do the first party data, whether it's about finding the right retailers like Amazon, where you can leverage the retail data and harness the data to create an audience graph. And at the same time, we are also seeing a lot of probabilistic project graphs, which will help you understand how the audiences that you have created will deliver better efficient reach across the internet. While these capabilities are going to adapt, the idea of the session was also to bring more aspect about from this area of disruption, where should we pivot? And the whole industry right now is thinking about how can I leverage creative as the new targeting? And when I'm saying creative as the new targeting, there is already too much content on the internet. And if I talk about the attention span of a consumer is already declining. With all these attention span challenges, not just for Gen Z, but all the audiences group, everyone expect the creative and the content to be personalized. And not even personalized, it has to be hyper-personalized. Forget about programmatic, whatever media you will drive, creative will be the new targeting. Because every brand is already doing demo, geo, affinity, location, device type, past purchase. So there is already too much population which is happening, which is increasing the cost of media. So how can we leverage creative as the new targeting? And guess what? The new guy who is here to help us shine this, solve the problem, is definitely our approach towards using Gen AI. A lot of people think that AI was invented November 2022 when ChatGPT was launched, but the media industry is using AI for more than two decades. But the challenge is, we as media industry always thought about using AI to bring cost efficiency. How can I reduce the cost of acquisition? How can I do better targeting? How can I bring more efficiency? And this is the first time in which the media industry is now thinking about using generative AI to do demand creation. There is a lot of problem which is happening in global economy. Recession, uncertainty, brands are already cutting their marketing budgets, and this is where 
Gen AI looks to be a sole force which is driving towards new demand creation. And I will talk about in the demo session how we can use Gen AI to create new demands, new pockets of cohorts to drive incremental business advantage for brands. So while Gen AI is supercharging creativity, a lot of brands are already obsessed with it. And there are different brands who are leveraging Gen AI not just for creative and content creation, but also people like us who are trying to automate and simplify the way we buy media, the way we plan media, and definitely how we measure the efficiency on media. So I quickly talk about some of the key initiatives that we did last year. So as Omnicom Media Group, we are very proud to say that we were the first holding group globally to get into an enterprise level partnership with some of these big holding groups like Google, Amazon, Meta, or even the likes of Microsoft. What we did, we leveraged their large language models, which is actually disrupting the whole generative AI space, to create our own ecosystem. So leveraging their entire large language models, we tried to think about how can we build our own closed ecosystem so that we can use these large language models same models what you're using, like a chat GPT, to train our own data sets. And the need of this closed ecosystem was definitely required because we want standard outputs for all our employees. As Omnicom, we have rolled out this product across 60 markets. More than 10,000 people are using it actively. So there was a greater responsibility on us to ensure that when they're prompting it to create a brand ad or to create a media plan, the output has to be standardized. While we started thinking about creating our own ecosystem, like Uncle Ben says, with great power comes great responsibility. And while navigating this whole ecosystem of integrating all the large language model together to automate media buying planning, we already realized that it's something that moment when you think that you have discovered the new fire. But sadly, we also realize fire can burn. And that's where we start thinking about how can we build our own AI task force. So we have a global AI task force which ensures that there is enough diversity, there is enough compliance in terms of what data are we using to train these models, and what is the output that we are using. But the whole idea is all about that we want to amplify creativity of our employees, not to replace any humans. This is where we created a solution called Omni Assist. So Omni is a global open orchestrating marketing platform. Every market we have housed around about 30 to 40 applications. All our employees access this platform day in, day out to do media planning, buying, activation. And all these applications help them analyze different cohorts of audiences, what should they buy, do channel planning, how much investment on digital versus offline versus TV. And this is where we thought about how can we bring generative AI to connect all these applications and harness the power of automation. So I quickly pay the video. Before the video, I wanted to talk about that these were some of the challenges that we were solving. And these are the agents what you think about. So these are our AI agents, which is almost like an extended arm for our employees. So rather than they manually doing the media planning of audience intelligence, finding the right cohort, or identifying which influencer they should work, they can actually give the task to these agents and free up their time so that they can spend more quality time in building strategy for our brands. So I'll quickly show you a demo to understand how these agents come to life and how as Omnicom we are automating the entire media process, not just programmatic. So this is how the platform looks like. Everyone have a personalized view based on the application that we have browsed in. For this demo, I thought about launching a new brand in athleisure and sports category. I know the yoga pants are still in trend in India. So if you think about, these are some brand inputs what we have got as the brief. Just using Omni Assist as a feature, I'm running the same large language model to understand which audiences I should target. So on a single click, I'm able to create audience cohort. But while I created the audience cohort, I wanted to understand the cultural trend. And for cultural trend, we use NLP, which is natural language processing, to scan the open internet. So we have built another agent which actually do all the scanning so that I don't have to manually search for the right content. I don't have to manually read all these articles. So using the simple prompt, Omni Assist also helps not just media cohorts, but also the cultural trend which is happening in the category. While I've used the cohort and the category, the next task is also about creating the audiences. And this whole workflow what you're seeing is also accessed by our clients. 
So when we started thinking about audience creation, this ugly chart is something what I get from most of the platform. Whether I work with any third party platform like a Lotame or even if I go in the big platforms and create audiences, this is how the understanding look like. So we have deployed Gen AI to simplify the audience language. What this language talks about, who is this audience, what are they buying, what are they buying behavior. The next task was fusing this audience into another ecosystem. And since we are talking about privacy first without IDs, we are now using Gen AI to transcribe these audiences into different world. So we use the same functionality partnered with Google on Vertex AI, and we are fusing this audience into the Google ecosystem without any cookies, without any device IDs to understand what these audiences are watching on YouTube, how their affinity looks like. And the next task was doing the media planning. So how can we use Gen AI to create different scenarios of budgeting? If the brand is looking for incremental revenue, what should be the right allocation? So these are multiple use cases in which the people at Omnicom are now powering Gen AI to get the work done from these agents in automation. And this is another agent which is actually helping us understand what are the right influencers that we should work with. What is the logical reasoning on selecting one influencer on another influencer? So while you have seen a lot of activities that we are building around planning, activation. This is another test that we are doing with Google using their Imagine 3, which is text to image model. We are fusing the same audiences into Google Imagine 3, which is copyright protected, privacy insured, to now start thinking about how can we build our creative storyboarding. So the same yoga enthusiast audiences that we built is now being pushed into Imagine 3 model. And using this Imagine 3 model, we are able to do a little bit of storyboarding at this stage. But I'm sure the way we are progressing on these LLMs, six months down the line, we will be able to create an actual video ad campaign as well. And then the last is personally my favorite because when I started, every day my manager used to ask, have you seen the dashboard? What numbers are performing in the dashboard? And there was already a lot of complexity in these dashboards. So we are now bringing Gen AI, to do simple prompting and give people like me what element is working for my campaign. Is it the creative? Is it the channel? So this is how we are solving the problem of automation for media planner. The next task, which was again quite fascinating for me to solve over the past 18 months was about activation. And when we talk about media activation, it was always challenging whether you are a search practitioner, social or programmatic. Like I said, the fragmentation is going to increase. You will have to manage multiple platforms. You will have to manage multiple DSPs. So how can we bring AI to solve this problem? And that's where we have created a tool called Omni Activation AI. This tool actually sits like a plugin on our trader's desktop. And once he uploaded this plugin, it actually start navigating across the ecosystem. While we started thinking about navigating across the ecosystem, we realized all these platforms are already building their AI capability to automate media pine. If you think about Google, they have Performance Max. If you think about Meta, they have Advantage Suite Plus. Somewhere down the line, the platforms were already offering AI capabilities to automate media buying. But sadly, like I said, everyone thinks that they have discovered fire in the form of new AI, but the fire can burn. And that's where the brand safety issues started popping up. These are real use cases. The image on the left is generated by Performance Max for a brand in UK. And the UK regulators actually sued the brand, not to Google, because Google said that the brand has used AI to create the ad assets. So this is where there are a lot of guardrails which is required when you're using platform-based AI capability. You need more customization based on your brand guidelines. We work closely with a brand called Diageo Elko Beverage globally. For that brand, we can't target kids' content. That's against the guideline. We can't target someone who is already addictive with drinking if we are seeing some signals available on internet because that's against the responsible drinking guideline. So every brand have to think about how can you build AI because AI is definitely going to give better result, but you have to think about your customized approach. From a customization, if you're thinking about building your own AI solution or thinking about partnering with us like Omnicom, you have to think about breaking down the solution what the platforms are making into three levers. The first lever is about how can you deploy AI to create inclusion and exclusion list? Because every brand have their guidelines on what content you are allowed to advertise. With Performance Max, Demand Gen, Advantage Suite Plus, all these platform-based AI, there is no control as a buyer. You can't bring your negative keyword list. You can't do exclusion inclusion. So this is where you have to think about your own solution. So what we have leveraged, we have leveraged AI to do inventory creation. 
give you a recent example would be, I know the sponsor is Amazon Ads, so maybe this is my time to bring Amazon Ads prompt. Uh, in India, we are working closely with a brand called Versuni, uh, formerly known as Philips. Uh, they have a lot of consumer uh, appliances, and for one of their appliances called Air Fryer, what we did, we leveraged AI to identify the content on internet where people are reading about how to use air fryer to make recipes easy. If you do Google it out, there is enough content, there is enough Instagram reels, there is enough YouTube videos, and there is enough written articles where you can think about a massive population in India is thinking about what recipes I can do, a quick hack using air fryer. So we used AI to identify this brand safe, relevant inventory for Versuni, package this inventory into a programmatic deal, and we send this deal onto Amazon DSP. And using Amazon DSP, we already had access to leveraging the retail data. People who are in market to buy an air fryer. So the combination of a retail data set, as well as using AI to bring inventory curation, is the gold mine spot for brands to leverage. The second task is about finding your own custom algorithm. And to make it more easy for you to understand, we work closely with all the auto brands globally. 70% of auto spends globally is being managed by Omnicom Media Group. So if you think about any auto brand, the way we think about Daimler, VW Group, Skoda, Porsche, Audi, every brand we have now mapped impression to sale journey. Once the ad is being exposed, the click is done, the user has filled a form, test drive is done, which car variant is he interested, which dealer are they visiting, all these data is being tracked. So how can we leverage this data, build our own custom algorithm to understand people who just bought the car or people who just filled the test drive form, what color of creative they like, what was the time of the day when they liked the ad, what platform they were watching the ad, what was the language of the creative. So all the ad impressions that we are burning right now are generating more than 2,000 log variables. So how you can harness these variables, create your own custom algorithm, so that when the right audience is on the right placement at the right time, you can actually maximize your bid. And I will show this use case in the real platform, how it works. And then the third was automation from the workflow lens. Every trader is now setting up 30 to 40 line items, whether it's in Google, Meta, LinkedIn. So how can we automate the workflow automation on all these creation of lines as well as management? So this is where we have created Omni Activation AI. So I'll quickly play this small video to give you a context how this works. Uh, within this tool, there are three offerings. One is performance AI, second is targeting AI, and the third is creative AI. So every client have their own firewall because when we're using the AI to train their model, we don't want to leverage a brand data to harness the valuables as well as the performance for any other brand. So every brand have their own firewall. And once we connect the plugin with our media buying platforms like Google and Meta, we start thinking about how can we use AI to find new cohorts of targeting? How can we leverage a data which is doing good job on Google into a meta platform. Think about there are certain keywords which is driving great results for you on Google search. How can you leverage them when you're buying ads on meta? Or if there is a one creator through which you are getting maximum ROI because that creator audiences really love your brand, how can you leverage that insight from a meta into a YouTube shorts? So this is where targeting AI, harness your performance across media spends, understand historic analysis, and we have also connected open web platforms like similar web, SCM Rush so that we can utilize the competition data which is available on internet. So bringing all these elements together, we are now able to create new targeting cohorts. And these are the targeting cohorts which are helping us do demand creation, finding opportunity for revenue incremental. And there is enough customization available. So as a trader, as a brand, you can bring your guidelines, you can bring your negative keyword list. So there is too much customization which we have built to ensure the brand safety guidelines. So while these cohorts are being built, a great example is for one of our, my favorite brand, McDonald's. Guess what? On weekend, health and fitness as a cohort gives us the maximum ROAS in most markets. The reason is, for health and fitness guys, weekend is the cheat day. So if Saturday, Sunday, I'm going to spend media budget targeting McDonald's guy, who's the regular guy eating Monday to Friday, my ROASes are down. So this is how we are leveraging AI to break the human biasness, because when we are doing media planning, there is enough biasness in our thought process. The second is the targeting AI, which is actually basically doing bid and budget multiplication. So whichever line is performing good across Google, Meta, 
Trade Desk, DV360, LinkedIn, we are doing bid and budget multiplication. Increase the budget in real time, change the bid scores, and we are able to do this at a scale across the industries. So there are greater examples what we have built. And then the last one is about leveraging this into the creative aspect. So whatever data elements we are tracking across the internet, how can we harness these elements and build relevant ads, which is about the dynamic ad creation using Gen AI. So there are certain use cases which I again will talk about for brands like McDonald's and DBS in India. We have leveraged the same tool to build relevant cohorts and ads using the same technology. So it's the same power of Gen AI is now able to understand what keyword, what cohort is performing, and how can I leverage that to create ad copies? How can I do A-B testing? Which category will drive more performance result for me? Is it the home loan category or the education loan category? And what should be my tagline on the platform? So this is how all the leveraging is coming into action. I'll quickly play this small one minute video for you to get the context how VW Group is leveraging this tool to bring dynamic creation as well as automation in media. Sound is content. Test. The VAM Content Intelligence team have created a unique new solution that provides Volkswagen with valuable insights and control like never before. The powerful proprietary AI tool describes the DNA of each image in a collection. AI and machine learning look at the marketing assets and make recommendations and predictions to improve targeted content. When linked to campaign performance data from Seismic, for example, the tool gives the user detailed results, providing key insights by categorizing the content and showing how well it performed, and whether it originated from central or local adaptations. This can then be linked back to the master asset. Ratings show the performance of campaigns and individual assets, allowing Volkswagen Marketing to quickly and easily adapt campaigns, even when live. As data for campaigns are collated over time, this will enrich recommendations and analysis, enhancing our understanding of successes across the business, empowering us to improve the performance of our marketing and identifying where we can invest for greatest impact. So whatever I've shown today is all available in India, live. We have people from Omnicom sitting in the audience group. We have people for networking outside. So please do connect if you have any relevant brief. The, the opportunity and the challenge what we bring for you is once you activate these AI-based power plugins, we guarantee that we can improve your baseline. It's not about guaranteeing certain outcomes. You already have your baseline, whether you are looking for test drive, video views, sales, footfalls, whatever is your baseline, we challenge that we can improve that baseline by 10%, else we will not charge for any services that we offer. So that's it from my side. I'll do a quick recap to think about that privacy is going to bring the fundamental change, how we buy media, how we plan media, how we activate. So think about privacy by design, privacy first initiatives for your organization as well. The second is all about this is a big tectonic shift happening because of Gen AI. So as a brand manager, you have to think about how you will create new user experience using the technology and the machines. And then the last is, this is the right time for you to embrace all these technologies because if you go into an unexpected zone, it's okay because everyone is testing out. But be at the forefront. The opportunity cost of not doing and leveraging these platforms would be higher than using it at this stage. That's it from my side. Thank you for being a great audience.